let's start on the um, actual election results because in some ways this election is very, very, very straightforward. We've got a Conservative Party running the same election campaign as in 2017, but without the incompetence, and it worked. And we've got a Labour Party running an election campaign that doesn't try to deal with its own weaknesses or with the big questions facing the country, and it doesn't. And that's broadly uh, what is going on. These are the results you'll have seen. Or this. So on the left-hand side, you've got change in the vote share, and on the right-hand side, you've got change in seats, seats that have moved, changed hands. The, uh, the big news is the fall in the Labour vote, but that fall in the Labour vote is allowing a growth in a Conservative seats. Because in the end, someone's got to hold these seats, and this is a two-party system. But the news on vote share is a Conservative fall, leaving Scotland aside um, for a second. So that's the thing you already know. Now I'm going to tell you something else you already know, but I think it is worth really, really thinking on. This is really not normal. Okay, so this chart is showing you the seats won or lost by oppositions in elections since the 1920s. So the first thing to say is generally uh, these lines are going up. I, in general, oppositions take seats. They don't lose seats. That is how this is meant to work. That's why it's called a political cycle and not called a one-party state. Okay? Now, what this chart is showing you is, is the latest election. These ones are red not because of Labour. They're just red to make you pay attention to them. Okay? There's one election since the 1920s uh, when an opposition party has lost seats on the uh, more seats than it did last night, and that is 1983, okay? which is the Margaret Thatcher's landslide after getting in in 1979. She's won a war. Various other things are going on. The, um, so that is the only time that gets um, close to this, and I think that that even that doesn't do justice to the difference. Okay, the, um, this election, which is showing green, is 1987. <laughs> is the last time you get close to a result where you've got an incumbent opposition, an opposition that's been in opposition for a long period, like they have been, so nine years. In 1987, they Labour have been in opposition for eight years. They still lost by 10 percentage points, so not dissimilar to the loss for Labour last night. They, um, uh, but they actually gained seats because they'd lost so badly in 1983 and the alliance collapsed. But, the, um, but my main point is, once you have been in opposition for nine years, historically, you do not lose seats. That is really hard to do. And I want to reinforce that again, which is even in 1987, similar length of time in opposition, the fact that the Labour didn't do very well nationally was against this backdrop. So this is showing you the economic backdrop to the election. In grey is 1987, and in red is today. So on the left, house prices surging. Britain was booming in 1987, unless you were either living in a place with lots of unemployed people or were unemployed. Most of the country was booming. House prices were going through the roof, 15-point growth in the year before. Uh, um, incomes were growing by 5% in 1987, and real GDP was growing by 1.5% a quarter. Okay. The country was booming, and that's the last time an opposition did badly on the scale of what we saw yesterday on vote share, and then, even then it didn't do as badly on the seat share. So, what is then going on at a regional level? So I think this is slightly more complicated than some of what everyone has wanted to talk about Labour losing in the North for most of this election and the Tories winning in the North. So there's definitely chunks of that going on, but I think we should be clear it's not quite as straightforward. So Labour has had a bad time everywhere and has definitely lost most votes in the North. The swing against Labour is strongest in the Northern regions. Okay? But the Conservative growth is actually strongest in the Midlands. So that's why you're hearing about Bolsover, Two, two out of the three Wolverhampton seat, seats flipping to uh, the Conservatives. So the East and the West Midlands is where the Conservative vote actually increased the most. And then across the rest of the country, the story is less about the Conservative vote increasing and more about the Labour vote collapsing, particularly in the North. But even in the South East uh, and London, the place where Labour has done best overnight, the Labour vote is falling um, significantly. Right, now we're getting into slightly techie. So, so this chart is showing you... Um, on the x-axis, how places voted in the EU referendum, and on the y-axis, the change, the change in the Conservative vote share between, in the blue dots, 2015 and 17, what I'm going to call, that's the first Brexit general election, okay? And the pink line is showing you the change between 2017 and 2019, the change in the second, so yeah, so these are adding up on top of each other, yeah? So what, what I'm really saying is the first line, so the blue line is telling you that the Conservative vote increased significantly in places that had voted for Leave in 2017. They got their Brexit boost, actually lots of it, in 2017. It is not last night's story. 
it is 2017's story. That, that was then reinforced this time around. So that happened again. The places where they saw vote share increase it were leave places last night, but most of the growth happened in 2017. The Labour, this is showing you exactly the same chart, but for the Labour share. Okay. So, and again, the, this one, the red lines are what happened in 2017, and the blue li dots and lines are what happened last night. And here, what we're saying is, actually, yes, you've got some effect of Brexit, but it is less, that line is less steep than it is for the Conservative vote share. And it's obviously just very different in the sense that when they were get, Labour was gaining seat, l votes in vote share in 2017, and is losing it more or less everywhere except for very Romani places this time. Yeah. But the line is less steep. Brexit is a less big deal for the Labour vote, uh, and it was definitely a, in particular in 2017. Right, this one's even, is, we're getting into complicated, which is, so the short term things that are happening here is, a, is Brexit running into the British Party first past the post system in 2017 and 2019, forcing people into their two camps, yeah, which is why we've got the two party share being back up at levels that everybody writing their academic books in the 2000s said would never ever happen again, apart from you, Tim, I'm sure, but basically everyone, including Tim, wrote that. The, that is a, uh, the, um, that's not fair. But anyway, the, that is like nonsense because it turns out you can do things to manufacture in a first past the post system that returning. The, um, but there are other big long term trends sweeping through our politics, one of which is the growth of age. And the growth of age is a defining, dividing line in who votes. So let's just focus on the Conservative vote on the left, and to keep this vaguely manageable, the 2010 lines and dots are showing you the 2010 general election, and the, the red and the uh, purple dots are showing you the 2017 and 2019 general election. So d let's just focus, for the sake of surviving this, on the steepness of the lines. The steeper that line is, the more it matters, it differentiates by place how old you are. Yeah? So the, older the steeper that line is, if you're an older place, the more you're likely you are to vote Labour, and the younger, the less likely you to vote Tory, and the less likely you are to vote Conservative if you're in a young place, is what you're showing. Okay? So young places down here, old places over here, very Tory places, very Labour places. What I'm really showing you here is, one, the Tory line is steep. Okay? So for all of the last decade, older places have been the places voting Conservative. The line steepens after the Brexit election referendum. Yeah, steepens, and it, and it is doesn't do much more this time. A little bit. Labour age generally has been less drastic, so the line is not as steep. But as you can see, the difference is that this time, Labour has been residualised more into younger voters. That Labour age is having a... The age in has historically been more important for the Tory vote, but last night, age was really important for the Labour vote because the only places Labour's vote held up was young places. OK? That is what is going on. The... Um, uh, this is the last thing I want to just end on, which is one of the lasting things we're all going to need and the government will need to reflect on is they are now holding a government with a very different coalition to any Conservative government any of us have lived through. The, um, so this is showing you exactly the same kind of thing I just showed you. My place is looking at their ages, but it's looking at their level of deprivation. Okay. So I'm showing you uh, most deprived places on the left and least deprived places on the right-hand side. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that obviously, in general, historically, richer places have voted Conservative, and poorer places have not done so. The, um, but this line, this line is becoming, let me get this the right way around, this line has become, uh, this time, is, is, this line is less steep this time than it was in 2017 i.e. the Tories are taking votes, their increases in poorer uh, places. In Labour, there's not a lot going on. But here's another way of thinking about this really concretely. So the average wage in places that voted Conservative in 2017 is £15.38 an hour. Okay? But the average age in places that switched to the Tories last night is £2 an hour lower. Okay? It's like 13 50 ish yeah? Those are different voters, different demographics, they have different wishes, they are much more left-wing on economic issues, and so the coalition that holds that together over five years, when you have already been incumbents for nine years, against that top economic backdrop I've told you about, is different, particularly if Brexit 
has gone off the table over the course of the five years as an existential issue. Obviously, it's never going away as a governing. You've got to do something about it issue. So that's all. The thing, if I leave you with one thing, is today everyone is talking about Labour, how big the collapse is. Is it Brexit or is it Corbyn to blame, which is a stupid conversation. It is clearly both. The, um, uh, but for the longer term, this may be the thing that is more dominant in British politics, which is you've got a Conservative Party running a totally different electoral strategy and coalition to anything they do, it, and they have succeeded against the odds in building that coalition. And the question is, what do they need to do to hold it? So